Hi guys, Winemaker Wednesday today, and we are jam-packed with things for you. Recently, I did a server staff training at a local restaurant and reminded me that not everybody knows everything about wine, obviously. So today I thought we'd break it down a little bit. Top six questions for a new person getting into wine. What is it? The types, the glasses, how to open a wine bottle. There's so many people that don't know how to open a wine bottle, and that's key to the enjoyment of wine. So those are the things we're going to cover today. Let's get to it. Okay, so let's get started. First off, very basic, what are the types of wines? And you can break down wine to really five basic categories of wine. A white wine, typically Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, Viognier, Chenin Blanc, those are white wine varieties. Rosé, Rosé can be a rosé of a multitude of different grape varieties, but it's pale color like this, that indicates that it's a rosé. Red wine, red wine does not always come in a bottle shape like this, it can come in other, many other bottle shapes, but you've got red wine as a category of wines, and there's a number of different varieties within red wine, Cabernet Sauvignon being the most uh, important and the top variety of all red wine. This shouldn't be too much of a surprise to people, but bubbles or champagne or sparkling wine or Prosecco, Cava, depending on where you are in the world, but bubbles as a category of wine. And last, but certainly not least, and they don't always come in small bottles like this, but it's usually an indicator of a dessert wine. It could be a sweet dessert wine like this. It could be sherry. It could be port. So there's a number of different after dinner dessert wines. This happens to be one of my favorites here, Dolce, uh, but we'll dessert wine. That's the fifth category. So there you have it. White, rosé, red, sparkling, and dessert wines. Okay, next let's talk about wine style. You hear that term used often. This wine has a style, that wine has a style, the winemaker has a style, or it's a house style. Well, what is that really describing? And it's really the combination of many factors that affect the wine's aromas, flavors, and mouthfeel. Notice I didn't talk about color, because color has less to do with its style than its uh, tasting characteristics, which are aroma, flavor, and mouthfeel. Those three things can be influenced by many, many different factors. Those factors include the grape variety, the region or origin of where the grapes came from, where they were grown, the winemaking style, the alcohol level, the chemistries of the wine, the pH uh, of the wine, whether the wine is sweet or dry, um, and then the winemaking techniques used to actually make the wine. All of those things impact a wine's style. So when you think about wine style, it's aroma, flavor, and mouthfeel primarily. Okay, we've got the wines out of the way. We've got the glasses here now. Let's talk a bit about the basics of stemware or wine glasses. Um, first, to start off with, you have stemmed, the stem of a wine glass. You have a stemmed glasses, and you have stemless glasses. They effectively do the same thing. The main difference is that when you hold a stemless glass, you're holding it by the bowl, the wide part of it, and the heat from your hand is impacting the temperature of the wine. Uh, you can avoid that impact by drinking your wine faster. Pro tip there. Uh, but if you hold it by the stem, you are not impacting the temperature of the wine in the glass, which is really the proper way to do it. But we actually use stemless around our house. 99% of the time, they're easier to clean, they're easier to hold, they go in the dishwasher really nicely. Um, and only once in a while do we actually pull out the, the stemmed glasses. All right, so how about the shape of the glasses? We have four different types. There are a million different types of shapes of wine glasses out there, but these are the four main types. This is first, what this tall sort of chimney uh, style here is what would be called a Bordeaux glass. So think of Sauvignon Blanc if you're going to have a white wine. Um, but from Bordeaux, you're going to think of your reds, so your heavy reds, Cab and Merlot. And it's a fairly narrow bowl with a narrow top, mainly directed when you swirl it to get a little amount of air in there and really direct the aromas right at your nose. This is what's called a burgundy glass, so a very wide bowl with a wide opening meant to get a lot of air in there when you swirl it and really help the aromas come out of the glass uh, for more delicate style wines. 
This is a standard sort of white wine glass. So think Viognier or Sauvignon Blanc or something like that. Um, you could drink pretty much anything out of this. It's a fairly neutral shape and just a smaller overall glass. This glass works well for dessert wines that we talked about earlier, port or sweet dessert wines. And this has actually become the choice of recent days for sparkling and champagne, which is what we all know this one from as a flute, a traditional flute. Uh, the objective of this is not to swirl it or anything like that, but it's really to uh, help visualize the bubbles rising through the glass. That's the main point of the flute. But these days, champagne uh, drinkers um, and sparkling wine drinkers are drinking them more out of a glass like this. Um, so from an enjoyment standpoint, this is, uh, this is a better glass for that. So there you have it. Those are the four main types of glasses. Um, and I think if you really want to get away with two glasses, two shapes of glasses that are keep it simple and easy, you go with a stemless Bordeaux and a stemless Burgundy. So there you go, keeping it simple. Okay, next up, we're going to talk and then show you how to open a wine bottle. I know, super basic. You probably all know how to do this. But I was recently at a server training at a local restaurant and noticed that several of, of the servers were pretty uncomfortable opening a wine bottle, um, if not actually using the wine keys incorrectly. So we'll talk first quickly about different types of wine keys, and then we'll do a little demonstration. Okay, so variety of different wine keys. I have three, four of them here. Um, there are many, many, many more types, but the basics first. Uh, we'll go with this one. This is what's called an Asso. And this is a very old traditional style. Of very rarely do I use this. Um, it's uh, wine professionals might use this. It's mainly used. It's a double bladed piece that fits around the outside of the cork, between the cork and the inside of the bottle. Uh, mainly used for really, really old corks. Um, so not very, not very common. But it's a wine type. You might a corkscrew you might come across. Um, this is. I don't actually know what to call this one. Um, it's got a corkscrew down the center of it, goes over the top of the bottle like so, and you twist it and the cork comes out. It's actually pretty easy to use, um, but doesn't work for all wine types and not my favorite favorite type, although it's a nice, uh, nice red color. Um, the next two are wine keys or waiters. Corkscrews is what they're called, but there is a difference between these two. And there's one that is preferred. So this is the first type, and the corkscrew comes out from the back. The foil cutter is at the top, and it has uh, the lever piece here to lever the cork out. You'll see that in a second. The main difference is that this one is fixed. This piece here is fixed. On this one, it's the same type of corkscrew, but it has a double hinge. So right here, you just see that right there, it actually hinges. And when I do the demonstration, you'll see why that's important. So if you get a waiter's corkscrew, you want to find one that has the double hinge in it. All right, let's get to the demonstration. Okay, here we go. So we'll take our bottle of uh, Trailhead Chardonnay to start with. Um, ours bottles do not have foils on them. We've talked about that before. You can check out the other video where we talk about foils and why you shouldn't use them, and we don't. But if you come across a bottle that does, on the back of most wine keys, there's a knife there and it's slightly serrated and you would come up underneath the cork finish of the bottle. You'd come up underneath that at a slight angle and just work your way around the foil and then peel it off the top and take it off that way. Um, alternately, sometimes uh, foils are loose enough. I actually just like to grab it, hold tight of the foil and twist the bottle and just take the foil straight off the top of the bottle. Sometimes you can get away with that. Sometimes you actually do need to cut it and peel the top off. With the foil out of the way, you open up the lever piece to expose the wine key or the wine corkscrew, and the point goes right in the center of the cork. You just push it in a little bit till it catches, and then slowly start to twist it with the bottle stable. And sometimes it's easier than, uh, than holding it in the air to stabilize it on something. And if you just start twisting, holding it roughly up straight up and down, the corkscrew will do the work. As you twist it, it drives it down into the cork. All right up to this point, most people uh, are pretty successful with that. Here's where it gets a little tricky. 
the lever piece has two stages to it. There's the first stage here that rests, and, you, and then the second stage when you get further out is the bottom. It'll rest on the top of the bottle on this piece here. You want a double hinged piece because as you go here, if that's a straight piece, you can't actually get it to bend in. But if you watch closely, as I push this, the lever now is sitting directly on top of the cork. Whereas if it's fixed, it's sitting out to the side and you have to kind of lever, lever the whole thing back over to get to it. But with a double hinge, you just push it to the side and now it's nice, everything's straight. The catch for the top of the bottle is sitting on top of the bottle. And now you simply pull. Now that's it. That's as far as that first stage is gonna go. Reset, you pull it up just a little bit to now catch the bottom and sometimes you can actually angle it in, catch the bottom of the corkscrew and hold that there. I'm holding, the, holding that piece with my finger and just slowly lever it out. It's that simple. It takes a little practice and having the right tool makes the difference. So the double hinged waiter's key is the answer that will help you. And that's it. Uh, unscrew it to finish the job completely and put the tool away and then enjoy. Okay, now you've got the bottle open. How do you taste the wine? Well, you might think that's really simple, right? Just pour some wine in the glass and drink it. That's called drinking, not tasting. If you want to learn how to taste the wine, it's a very simple process. There's five steps and each step starts with an S. So it's called the five S's. The first step is to see the wine. So let's pour some of our trailhead Chardonnay in this nice burgundy glass here. And we'll take a look at the color of the wine, nice pale yellow, it's clear, it's clean, there's no sediment or haze in the glass. So that's the first step is to see it. Step number two is to swirl the glass. When you swirl the glass, again, as we spoke about earlier in the video, to get air into the glass to help drive the aromas out of the glass. So we swirl it. The next step is to, the third step is to sniff the glass sniff the wine, so you smell the aromas, it smells lovely. The fourth step is to sip it. And you see people doing all kinds of funny things, running air through their mouth and all that. I really just need to take a quick little sip of it. Not a big gulp, but a sip to coat the palate and then swallow it. And then the last step is to savor it. The fifth S is to savor the wine. So that's to feel the wine on your palate, how it goes down the back of your throat, um, to feel the weight of the palate. And then there's other aromas and flavors that will kind of fill the inside of your uh, aroma nose and back of the palate uh, as, it, as you savor the wine. So those are the five steps, pretty simple. You see it, you swirl it, you sniff it, you sip it, and then you savor it. That's how to taste wine. Cheers. All right, well, we've covered a lot of ground in this quick video here. Hopefully you've learned a few things about the different categories of wines, what wine style means, and that could be a video all on its own. Maybe we'll do that uh, at some point. Um, we've talked about wine stemware, wine glasses, and the different kinds and what you, what you can use at home and what we like to use around here, our stemless version. Um, we've showed you how to open a wine bottle. Um, again, that uh, should be simple and straightforward. I hope that it is, but I see a lot of people struggling with it. So I wanted to share that with you here today. And the last and most fun part of all of this is how to taste the wine. And yes, drinking is different than tasting. And so the five S's are how you taste a wine. So hopefully you learned a few things, enjoyed the video. Make sure to hit like and subscribe if you want to see more of these. And cheers. We'll see you in the next one.